Situated at Contra, in a spectacular position overlooking Loch Craig Niche, are the remains of two burial cairns and a large circular enclosure. These monuments were first recorded in 1699 by the Welsh antiquarian Edward Lloyd, whose drawing shows the general layout of the cairns and some features which are no longer visible. The two cairns are different in size, with the larger to the northeast, while the smaller cairn is to the southwest. Standing between the cairns is a four metre high stone, which might have a couple of artificial hollows called cut marks on the lower part of its northwest side. The enclosure lies just a short distance to the northwest of the cairns, and it is formed by a large number of small, grass covered stones. Lloyd's drawing shows the enclosure centre was once occupied by a circular setting of four stones, while a four stone alignment could be seen on its southern side. Even though it's thought this alignment no longer exists, it's possible two of the stones are still in situ and were reused to form the foundations of a wall and a ruined house. From the centre of the enclosure, these stones are aligned to the high south-southwest horizon. When the cairns were excavated by D. Simpson in the late 1950s, the remains of a burial kiss containing some burnt wood was found in the smaller cairn. The larger cairn was once covered in white quartz, and while it never contained a central burial kist, it seems a short wooden post had once stood in this position. What was thought to be the main burial kist was found near a large kerbstone on the cairn's northwest side. The standing stone had been leaning for some time, and after it fell in 1978, while it was replaced in its original socket, it was realigned towards the centre of the two cairns. Although taken in thick mist from near the northwest side of the larger cairn in 1977, this picture shows the standing stone was originally aligned towards the large eastern kerbstone of the smaller cairn, which can just be seen behind the base of the standing stone. Even though the stone has been re-erected, as these two features line up with the northwest side of the cairn, it is likely the standing stone was deliberately aligned from the burial kist to the higher horizon. On the cairn's southern side, Simpson found a large recumbent stone was lying in front of a feature shown in Lloyd's drawing, which turned out to be a false doorway or portal. Although the false portal is now reburied, Simpson suggests this was orientated to where the midsummer full moon would have set every 18 and a half years at the major standstill. But this cannot happen because of the height of the horizon. From the centre of the large cairn, the reburied false portal is directly in line with where the winter solstice sun would have originally set at the centre of the higher horizon. And the two stones to the southwest of the enclosure are also orientated towards this event. This might be the reason the burial kist was placed on the northwest side of the cairn, where it could be easily opened as the midwinter sun set in line with the standing stone. The orientation of the false portal is similar to that found at the Kokarn Kerb Cairn in Benderloch, which is aligned to where the sun will appear at midwinter. When the cairn was excavated, a large cut mark slab was found in front of the portal and this was probably where offerings were made to the spirits within the cairn as the midwinter sun rose above the horizon. At other cairns such as those at Clava near Inverness, it's obvious from the way the midwinter sun shines down the passages into the burial chambers that this was an important part in the cairn builders beliefs and they could have entered the cairns at this time to commune with the spirits of their ancestors. But due to the height of the horizon at control, the sunlight could never have shone all the way down a passage into a burial chamber, and this is perhaps why they were never built. From the centre of the large cairn, the standing stone to the southwest is in line with where the sun will set in early November and February. These times were later known as the festivals of Samhain and Brigier, 
which were celebrated about 45 days before and after midwinter. While Samhain means summer's end and is the same festival we call Halloween, Brigia is named after the young fertility goddess who is reborn at this time to bring life back to the earth after the darkness of winter. From the large cairn, the northwest burial kist and the enclosure lie in the general direction of the midsummer sunset, while from the smaller cairn, the standing stone is in line with the midsummer sunrise. While we will never know why these cairns were built on this hillside at Control, what is clear is that they were very carefully constructed to mark the rising and setting sun throughout the year. As solar orientations are commonly found in many of the ancient burial monuments of this period, perhaps the sun was worshipped as a god who brought the promise of rebirth and new life to the spirits of the ancestors. <laughs> 